Welcome to another episode of Zero Ales and Hockey Tales with Wally. And today, I'm so excited to have on a 30-year-old from London, Ontario, Canada, a fourth-round draft pick of the Chicago Blackhawks. His hockey journey has taken him to Canada, the USA, Austria, Slovakia, Germany, Hungary, and the Czech Republic, a staple of the London Junior Knights and Mississauga St. Michael's Majors, laced up for almost 300 AHL matches over six seasons, ran amok with the Ice Pirates of Krimichau in the Shed's Honey Hole, the second league in Germany, with Fear and Dried Sick Tours in Zwei and Fump Sick Spielen, that's 34 goals and 52 games played, folks. Even ran a muck in the Ebel with Orly Zanajmo <laughs> with <laughs> over a point a game and is the Shed's first trip to the Czech Republic. Welcome to the Shed, Rob Flick. <laughs> Thanks, Wally. Pumped to be here. Yeah, man. Nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah, nice to meet you too. <laughs> um, it's pretty early over here in Canada. Um, so you're Where exactly are you out of? I'm in Kincardine, Ontario. Kincardine. Okay. Okay. I drive. I, I used to drive through there a bunch or that area. Well, do you want to hear something creepy to start this off? Absolutely. Once uh, Carl helped us set this up, I uh, creeped you out on Instagram and I saw a couple photos at the Bruce Peninsula, which absolutely. Was, you'd, you'd probably drive by here on the way out there. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. No, that's, uh, that's where I want to be. Is that, yeah. is that creepy that I was checking you out on Instagram, checking out your oh, photos? No. You got to do your homework. Well, I tell you, your body's a temple, eh, sir? <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah, no, I've been, uh, I've been trying to go down the health route for some years now. So, um, well, you're doing better weird. than me, bud. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, uh, you could probably have a pretty strict diet then, eh? Uh, you know what? I'm tinkering with things on and off all the time. I, I don't know. Are you a tinkerer? Well, yeah, you know, <laughs> one day I think I know something, the next I think I don't. So there's always there's always changes going on, but I'm I'm usually following some sort of protocol. Yeah. What about with your curves and your stick? Are you doing the same shit with that? Um, you know what? I think I think I gave up on that years ago. Yeah. I found out uh, it just didn't change anything for me. So. I tinkered with my diet too while I was a player. I would sometimes have one beer at lunch after practice, and sometimes I'd have like four or five. <laughs> well, that's, you gotta find it. You gotta find how. Like, like is it a Tuesday? Is it a Wednesday? What works for me? What's gonna make me feel good, right? Yeah, you gotta loosen up. <laughs> um but yeah the bruce peninsula is a nice place that's me and me and the my wife went uh out that way for our one of our last anniversaries you know yeah. beautiful spot yeah it is it's uh it's kind of um like you get all the uh the outdoors that you want but it's also not uh like it's secluded still you know it's not uh grand Ben where there's you know, right. uh, yeah tober Mori's getting a bit carried away though with tourists yeah, I can see that. I don't make it up that far much, but uh, hopefully nobody finds out about Concordia, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Got to stop talking to people in the shed. Tell people how great it is. <laughs> yeah, 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 we don't need yeah. more people, folks. <laughs> um, so this is also how we know each other, though. Was this is how it works, folks? In the hockey world, was you were having lunch with Carl Hudson this week? Were you not? I was. Yes. Where I was mean, that? That's uh, Katowice, Poland. So you're in the check though. Right. So I, I mean, call me a bad friend, I guess, but uh, I'm only 50 minutes away from him. And this was the first time I got to see him all season. So, well, and, and that happens. I remember like some of my best buddies were on beating high and I moved 30 minutes down the road to Hellbron. And well, yeah. you know what? Now we're playing against each other. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, <laughs> no, but it was, yeah, it was amazing. It's, uh, it's such a quick trip. Um, no border travel and yeah there no problem and um so where'd you go for lunch what type of meal are we having we uh carl took me to a classic polish joint so i ended up getting the uh you, you gotta go you gotta go with the potato pancakes that's an Is that right potato pancakes so w that wouldn't be maple syrup on a potato pancake no no it's uh it's not a breakfast thing it's um say what now it's, it's not, yeah, it's like a normal, typical meal. So they put that kind of on the base and then they put their meat and- On whatever. top of a potato pancake to make it like not a breakfast thing. Now it's like a meal. Yeah, yeah. Huh. 
sounds like pretty good meal. Yeah, it was. I mean, there was a couple of pints had too. So, you know, well, well, you're going for lunch with Carl, whether it's the world of boats in Cardiff or whether it's in Vit- <laughs> Kovice, Poland or wherever you were. <laughs> yeah. If you're going to lunch with Carl, you know, you're having a couple. When in yeah. Rome, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he used to tinker with his diet too. <laughs> actually his rules were always uh he wouldn't have a beer during the weekend he would he would just floor it after games i think (laughs) (laughs) yeah i think he's changed that up a bit he's kind of a steady uh moderation as a dad you have to right it's a totally different experience you can't be florida because you can't get up the next day yeah yeah you live and you learn right yeah so um also how it's early today was last night i coach an under 11 team here in town my son's team and we had our first playoff game. Holy moly, was it emotional. Jeepers. I tell you, 1-1, one, one, seesaw battle. And, you know, maybe their coach doesn't really know what's going on. But I thought the game ended in a tie. We got a power play, two minutes left. I put out the guys I thought would get the job done. The buzzer goes. I think it's a tie. I think it's over. And then the refs like, the players start going on the ice. And the refs like, what are you doing? There's still 10 minutes overtime. So we regrouped and we won it in overtime. Pretty exciting yeah, stuff. Great. Yeah, yeah. So my little fella, Colby, um, scored his first OT winner last night. So it was a pretty big oh. day. Yeah, oh. fun ride home, you know? That's and Harvey's, a couple Angus burgers. Oh, know? yeah. That's <laughs> why you got, you got the, uh, the the proud dad going on right now. I thought there was an extra uh, pep in your step this morning. I, I, I got a little spring in my step, but it's, you know, it's a proud dad for the whole team, man. They grinded it out. This team was blocking shots. We were all over them. And we just couldn't buy one. But uh, – you know, those games where you can let them slip when a team that you probably should beat is blocking shots and like, you just mm-hmm. can't buy one. But like the, the little, the little fellas just kept grinding it out until the gosh darn puck went in, you know? Hey, what is that? Will beat skill. Right. But if the, if, if the skill has will the skill plus will oh dear. <laughs> beat will. Yeah. And that's what my little under 11 concurrent Canucks were working with last night. Way to go fellas. See you Saturday for game two. You know, uh, yeah. I uh, I actually had a pretty memorable tournament up that way. I think it was Chesley. Oh, uh, yeah. That was my first. That was actually my first tournament ever. I was uh, I was a young Timbit. I think I was five or six, five or six. But we won the uh, we won the consolation finals, and that overtime situation was crazy. We went from uh, five on five, four on four, three yeah. on three, two on two, one on one. And did did it go all that way? Yeah. Guess who scored one on one? Of course, yours truly. <laughs> I've never had a greater hockey moment since. I tell you, well, you see the kids win something like that with that puck with it, man. Like I know, like I almost jumped over the boards, but I think there's some parents in the stands, like they almost jumped over the boards. Like watching kids, you don't know what's gonna happen. Like there could be a breakaway each way. A kid could fall down, and it is as exciting as hockey gets to watch. <laughs> Oh yeah. 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 And then you see their little faces when they score a big goal or like the team wins. My goodness. They still don't get it yet though. I tell you, it's funny to watch warmups. The boys have obviously been watching NHL because now mid warm up, all of a sudden they just go sit on the boards and start stretching <laughs> and then they'll get up and skate around. It's like, I think they'll be starting to go no buckets here suited. warm up. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> okay. So you played with Carl with the ice pirates of Kremit Chow, eh? The Eis Piraten. That's right. Genau. Can you speak a little bit in Deutsch? Nicht viel, aber drei Jahre. Ich habe gelernt. Genau. So you've been, uh, you were learning for three years. You're trying. You played there three years. Yeah. But you know what? You, you try in the season, right? Because you're there and you're, <clears throat> it's, it's motivating, right? You go to the store, everybody's speaking German. It's German in the room, but you come home in the summer and it's like, yeah. Well, what am I doing here? Are you still going to go sit down? And you got to dedicate some time to it. But once I, um, I, I wanted to go the German route. I was trying to get a German passport. And once that kind of fell through and I started playing in the Czech, you know, it's just kind of. Uh, and they say, if you don't use it, you do, in fact, lose it. That's correct. I've heard that. I've heard yeah. that. That's why I try to, you know, spitball a little bit on here every once in a while, just to try and bring it back, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, been a long time for me now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so another guy I know from that team of the Ice Pirates or Pirates and Krimich was Dominic Walsh, former oh, Hellbronner yeah. Falcon. He's a great dude. Should get yeah, him in my shed. Sure. 
He's uh, yeah, get him in the shed for sure. He's uh, he's still there. He'll be he'll be there for uh, he'll be there forever. He's been there forever. I think he only played like the one or two years at Hellbrown, and then he's been there since. Yeah, honestly, I had no idea he even played anywhere else. Why would he? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, maybe because the rink's too cold. Yeah. I was uh, I I had never before I got there. Somebody had told me. I think it was Robbie Zarnick. And he mentioned it to me. He's like, yeah. Uh, or actually, you know what? It might have been uh, Jamie McQueen played there, and he mentioned something about you know, the rink being open. I'm like, what? Okay, whatever. I didn't think much about it. <laughs> Get there. And that's the first time I've ever seen a rink like that. It's open. You can yeah. see the forest. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's pretty. Honestly, I loved it. It felt like you're in a backyard rink. Um, I don't wouldn't say I loved it. I wouldn't say that. I would say I loved it certain times of the year. I didn't like it when uh, it was the beginning of the year and you couldn't see from zone to zone because there was so much fog uh, in the arena. Well, that wasn't when I didn't like it. I didn't like it when it was so cold uh, that our water bottles all froze. You couldn't get a drink of water after a shift. And obviously I had conditioning issues and <laughs> the, it was so cold that like your stick didn't flex the way it was supposed to. Like it was like, yeah. it was firm. Well, actually uh, funny, funny, quick story. Um, the equipment manager there, uh, equipment manager there, uh, Klaus, he, uh, he uh, put me in a little time out there. He wasn't happy with me because I was shooting pucks after practice and it was too cold. So he didn't want me to break any sticks. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't do the extra work. Got to get off the ice. Eh? Too cold. Nah, you gotta, if you're, if you're in the Dell too, you just get, out just get off. Yeah. Oh, you think I fit it so well there. <laughs> yeah. um, so where and what are you doing now? Oh, well, um, you're in the Czech league, like the top wonder, Czech league. I wonder that question every day, but, uh, yeah, I'm in the Czech extra league right now in, um, Ostrava, but we're called Vitkovica. It's just a little region in Ostrava. Ostrava is the city. Ostrava is the city. Yeah. But we're called, uh, Vitkovica. It's just a little part of the city, I guess. So they, uh, they went with that. And, um, this is my second season here. Well, I did kind of a half season last year. So. Yeah, you did. A, yeah, research team found that. I don't yeah. know where it is. You were in Hungary in the Slovakian league, and then you go from there right. to the Czech league? Yeah, well, I, I, I ended the year in uh, with Orly Zanoimo in the Czech, uh, with a Czech team in the Austrian league. And um, the following year was this, uh, the big um, COVID year, whatever. Yeah. Uh, guys were... Uh, Guys were sitting at home, not getting much, and um, I actually uh, I had a deal, but uh, it wasn't really quite what I I wanted. So I, I waited, played the waiting game, and that that didn't work. During well. COVID, that's not a good it deal. Was not smart, no. That's like during a lockout. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that wasn't. Good. But anyways, um, it all it all kind of worked out because I ended up. If you're out. in the Czech Super League, I think it all worked out. No. Yeah. Oh. I'm, <laughs> We're grateful to be here. This is a that's a very hard league to get into, is it not? Yeah, I mean, I I don't I I don't know. Uh, I don't I, know many Canadians I, that played in that league. Yeah, like how how many imports are there? So there's yeah, there's not many. I was um I was the only import. Uh, well, we had two Latvians when I got here last year. We had a French Canadian and myself. This year we had the the two Latvians. Um, and um. It was just, yeah, it was just me and them. They spoke English, but they didn't really want to speak English. So it wasn't yeah. a lot of But then we ended up. We've, Are you really bored during the days? Uh, you know what? It, it depends. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of time, yeah. And I, a lot of time. Like, to be done. like you kind of want to, you know, you want to, like this, you want to go shoot the shit and uh, get to the shed and uh, right. have some talks. But um, no, we, we just actually... Uh, there, there is a bunch of good guy, Czech guys on the team that speak English as well. But um, we got a Swedish guy, two Russians, and uh, we have one Latvian left, and myself. So there is. Uh, we have what, do you know what the rules are like? For so, as if they're from Europe, they're not an import, or have they allowed a certain many, no matter where they are in the world. You don't even know. I, I'm not quite sure how this league works, but I know when I was in the Evil, it was a point system. Um, uh, 
Yeah, so, I know that about that. It's like if you're an import, you're worth most points. If you're a right. National League player, you're basically the same. And then yeah. if you're a junior player, they basically you're like a minus point. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But no, I, I, I think there might be just a player. Cap. Okay. Do you do all because you've moved countries, right? I went through that in your intro. You've been on a, in a few different countries and um, I always found it interesting because once I found like a home base in beating I was there four years. But then once I needed to find new places to play, man, in Europe, there's a lot of players available. How do you keep swinging all – who's swinging these deals for you? You got an agent or you do it yourself? Uh, yeah, I had a little bit uh, – I had a tough – a couple tough goes with uh, with agents, um, but I ended up uh, – I understand what you mean. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's an <laughs> interesting world out there. But uh, one – one of them, uh, I'll make it short. I was uh, I was hanging on to the dream of a German passport, and I was supposed to, I'd signed with Bremerhaven, and that's why I played in Krimichau. And uh, I was supposed to play a year there, and then get my German pass and, and play. play for Bremerhaven in Bremerhaven. the DEL yeah. for for much more money. Well, in Bremerhaven, not so much. They kind of they, they tempt you with the passport. So that's kind so of, then yeah. once you get your passport, you play a year there, then you do well, then you go to the big boys. That's the idea. Yeah, hopefully. So it was kind of shitty to, uh, you know, not have that work out, but uh, it worked out okay. And um, yeah, once that kind of fell through, I had to start, you know, looking elsewhere. And yeah. Yeah. It's agents. It's, it's a weird game, right? I've had a few of them in the shed and uh yeah. You know, it, I, one thing for me, one guy, sorry, buddy, I deleted your episode, Matt Federico. We, yeah, we did her and fell right in the pocket. And then by accident, it just didn't work out. <laughs> sorry, buddy. But like one <laughs> thing I brought up with the agents is, man, I remember when I got my first big time agent, I thought like then I had made it because I had had a big time agent and I forgot I'd like actually still score goals and play good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Agents. Play. But uh, no, they, uh, yeah. So, so I ended up um, just kind of getting hooked up with the guys I'm with now and they're great. Um, and they, uh, so they, they swung deal, you the deal in the check. Yeah. They deal mostly with uh, check and uh, maybe a little bit in the Austrian league, but they're, they're mostly check. They know. And how do you get into that then? How do you get in with guys in check? Do you get it? Like they how just, does they contacted me uh, through Facebook actually. Is and that right, eh? One, the one guy I'm working with. Um, you think they saw the picture of you at the Peninsula too? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not, I'll tell you. I'm hoping. Yeah, I don't know. But um, I'm playing. I'm actually I'm playing with my agent's brother. He's my line mate. So, um, Is that right? Yeah. That's cool. It's always cool how it all works out, but it's always knowing someone, right? So if yeah. you're with check agents, so, and then you got to go somewhere else, then you'll have to... S- probably do a switcheroonie again eh well i don't know i think these guys are pretty big so but and they kind of they kind of uh work hand in hand don't you like if the, if, an, if another agent finds a deal i guess they talk and then maybe they make split they it. swing their shit yeah not nah, it it's a different world with the agents over there than in north america and yeah. uh like the guy i had on was a, like an nhl agent and he was explaining it that like what if you sign a guy and you're with them for a few years and then they decide to go to Europe. If you hook them up with a European agent, they do like money sharing for the rest of that player's career. Really? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. And that's how they like, that's how the European agents get the NHL agents to swing them their way. Okay. Yeah. Weird stuff, eh? Yeah. Be, yeah. Anyways. Okay. Um, one thing I should bring up so I don't forget, because sometimes it slips my mind when I get chatting, especially this time of day, is the Mad Sundin signed jersey behind me. Folks, we even have a letter of authenticity for that shit. It's real. And that raffle is ending in like a day or two, like on my website. It's going to be over like soon. So you better listen to this and then buy your tickets right away, because that's at aleshockeytails.com. And uh Anyways, that jersey will be over very shortly. That's to raise money for Sick Kids Toronto. So it's for a good cause. Buy your tickets. Don't be punks, right? And uh, we also have a signed stick at Jersey of Back Ruth for hemophilia to raise money for his nephew, Teddy. So buy your tickets, folks. People helping people in the shed, you know? One beer at a time. (laughs) 
Okay. Anyways, I better move on. I'm on the wrong side of the page now because the research team was hot here. So you're in Czech. What's the food like in Czech? I've been there. The Waltons got engaged there. Fun fact in Prague. Um, but I don't really recall the food. Wow. Okay. Yeah. This is an interesting story. Little tidbit there. Uh, on, the, yeah. on the Charles Bridge in Prague. Very romantic. I had my dog. It was yeah. raining. I was trying to get him to sit. He wouldn't sit because it was raining. And she's like, what are you doing? Why are you trying to get the dog to sit? I'm like, ah, never mind. I'll just do it. And then That's I did bad. it. Yeah. Then I went for a dark Czech beer. Um, and the dog came in the restaurant. You know, he had some beer too. And uh, we had a great little afternoon. I'm going to write that down. Charles Bridge. Good spot. Okay. Yeah. Just don't do it in the rain. You know, it's not as romantic. Yeah, I've been I've been on that bridge with uh, heavy winds and blizzard uh, snow blowing right in your face. It it can be a little much. Yeah, that might be too much too. I was yeah. a little drizzle, and it was cold rain. It was November, you know. <laughs> yeah. 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 Anyways, yeah, no. The uh, you asked me about the food. The food yes. Uh, um, most traditional, I would say, meal that I uh, I'm digging when I go in there is the potato dumplings with uh either duck that like duck leg and um the uh, red cabbage or like a big piece of they do uh, a beef maybe like a goulash or whatever but it always comes with those potato dumplings potato and dumplings and then you had potato pancakes you're living a whole different potato world than me hey you know when in rome right well yeah like a potato dumpling jeepers that sounds Never really f- I've never had one of those. Oh, they go great with a with a good Pivo beer. Huh. Yeah, I'm sure they do. Um, I don't. Re- yeah, that's weird. I don't really recall food being good in Czech, but that was like my first year in Europe, and you know, I was a bit of a scaredy pants. Right? Yeah, you gotta. Yeah, you can't be scared. You gotta dive in. You gotta get right involved, right? Win in Rome. Yeah. Okay. Um, that sounds like a great meal. What did you say the meat was? Was a leg a duck? Yeah, I like the duck. Uh, the duck leg. Or they do some, uh, there's a lot of beef dishes. Um, yeah. It's, it's I was pretty- surprised how much I like goose in Germany that they have for Christmas, right? Big, uh, yeah, the big giant uh, goose uh, drumstick or whatever. That right, is. and then you get the canoodle on the side that's like that's, stuffing well, or that's, potato. That's I'm telling you, that's what the canoodle is. That's the potato dumpling. It, but a dumpling is like the asian thing that's like almost like a pasta right you're, you're thinking yeah you're thinking the asian dumpling i'm thinking the semel noodle or the yeah so okay so the ball the ball of potato well that's yeah that's the ball one but you you can get the bread dumpling too that that but i like the potato one it's thicker it's heavy you know it's, god it's, darn you're turning me on early in the morning talking about all these potatoes dumplings oh. gosh I'm, okay usually don't eat breakfast i think i might today <laughs> all right um what's your coach's nationality check yeah talks english to you uh he does i mean there's not uh <laughs> he doesn't uh translate the, me- the meetings are in check meetings are in check and uh it's a lot of uh figure it out on your own but yeah. he can speak english he speaks english very well he yeah he played uh he played in the nhl for a while there and um it's kind Who's, of, uh, oh yeah Milos Holan, very good player. Yeah, set uh, set the record for de-scoring in uh, in our league. Played Jeepers. Um, yeah, so no, he's uh, knows the game well and uh, speaks English. I think he speaks Russian too. He's, uh, yeah, I I just remember my first year in Germany. The yeah, like you said, the coach was German, former national player. You know, big dog and. You yeah. knew he knew English. He could speak English. I only had one meeting with him through the whole year, and it was about my diet, really. <laughs> <laughs> and they were, yeah, they were putting me in fat club. I had to do extra cardio. <laughs> uh, but he could speak English in that meeting. But that was like the only time the whole season I heard him speak English. And every meeting would be all in German. It's my first year over there. And yeah. I'd just sit there and listen, and I'd be like, so do I got to know anything? And the guy would be like, no, just go play. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what it is most of the time. Until you mess up, then they go, well, "Why didn't you know?" <laughs> right? Did you? Were you not listening? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, do I have any other questions? How many fans do you get, Matt? Well, How big's your rink? It's been. Uh, it's actually really big. It's, it's a really, really nice rink. It's where the uh, World Juniors were held uh, three or four, three, three or four years ago. 
Cool. Um, I think we can hold nine, 10,000, but uh, with the uh, regulations these days, it's something like a, you know, such a fraction of that. So we Still? don't, yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't, we don't really have the potential to fill it up, but I, I think they get, uh, they were probably getting around six, 7,000 when, um, and maybe even some sellouts when it was, uh, you know, normal land. You were yeah. Little, yeah. Well, um, okay. Next, well, now we'll get into this now. Okay. Growing up in London, Ontario, Canada, not far from here. Um, a lot of good hockey players come out of there. Yes. Yes. It's a hub. That's for how, sure. So how'd you get into her? Um, how did I start? Yeah. In London, Ontario, how'd you get into hockey? Well, my dad, uh, was a huge hockey guy still is still my biggest fan, but, uh, he got me going. Actually, I think I started uh, skating on the backyard rink before I even, um, for your signed up for the real deal. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I had a little bit of a head start that way. And then, um, then I did the old, uh, Tim bits hockey. That was, uh, yeah. Five and six, I believe. And Heights, then I, they call it. Yep. Yeah. 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 And then I played, uh, just kind of like, uh, I guess it's competitive, but it's, it's like your, uh, city kind of city hockey. Right. And, um, I had a couple of years doing that. And, uh, then I tried out for the triple A team around eight or nine, maybe. And then you play triple A the rest of the way. Play junior nights. Yeah. That would, that How tall are you? Research team didn't look, are you about six, three or four? I'm, I'm, I, I would say I'm uh six, three. If, Pull, give me a good stretch. Pull me out a little bit. Yeah, I'm I'm five eight. If you do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. So what else do I got here? So then you get you play AAA. You do well. I saw that. Uh, but you get drafted to the St. Mike's Majors, eh? That's so that correct. that that's uh that's like Toronto. Yeah, yeah. It was. Uh... Is it a school? Oh no, sorry. Yeah, it, it was. That was so. That was the Toronto St. Mike's Majors. They were a school. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. So, do you go to school while you play in the OHL? Is that what it is? I uh, I did grade twelve, and I did kind of an extra semester after, which was a total waste of time. But um, yeah, yeah. I did my I did my grade twelve and finished. I came back to my school in London at the end of the year and graduated there. Oh, okay. Um, so when you guys were in St. Mike's though, like, I don't know anything about there. I've never been to that rink, never been there. Um, you guys are pretty good. eh? Uh, yeah. So you got good, at least at the end. Right. Yeah. We had the, the Memorial cup we were hosting. So it was kind of like, uh, you know, oh, you hosted it there. Yeah. Yeah. So he, he was kind of building it up the first year I got there. Um, we finished, I think, I think either lost in the first round or the second. And then the next year, one round further. And then the next year we, uh, we had a really strong team. Didn't, uh, didn't lose many games. That's for sure. A couple of the people I wrote down the research team saw one guy. Um, Cause my son got a picture with him after an Islanders game, Casey Sezikis. Yeah. He was there most of the time, eh? That you were there. Yeah. yeah he was our, he was our big dog center iceman. Uh, he gives her out there, eh? He just yeah. gives her. Well, he, we, we had that, uh, we had the coach, um, we had Dave Cameron. He was pretty, uh, <laughs> he was pretty adamant about uh, structure and uh, hitting and, you know, all the little things. And I think he, Casey was good with that because uh, he kind of. He do, he's one of those guys that any team he plays on the coach is going to love him. Cause he just yeah. works so hard and he does everything right. Does I've that. watched him play like two games with my son. I've seen him play. He's quite the, he's quite the little giver. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that was kind of like a, our whole team had to play like that. So it was. Uh, Exhausting. Yeah, we, were, <laughs> we weren't flat. Yeah. We weren't flashy and it's honestly not the funnest uh, to do sometimes, but yeah, like the Daytona beach bombers of the East coast. I remember. Yeah. Yeah. Defense first went two, one, three, two, right. Yeah. <laughs> Not score many goals. Um, so then what happens in the Memorial cup? You guys host it. Did you do all right? Yeah. Well, actually it was kind of a tough year for us. We lost uh, <laughs> game seven overtime of the OHL cup. Uh, of the final game, like overtime of the final game. Yeah. Yeah. Who's that, that against? Owen Sound. Sorry, man. 
yeah, tough pill to swallow. And uh, then we lost in the finals of the Memorial Cup as well. <laughs> yeah. And funny <laughs> to bit here, uh, my uh, the coach, he had that, he participated in the uh, World Juniors that year and they had the monumental collapse to Russia in the final game where they lost, uh, they were up, was it like- That was uh, all the same year for that guy? Yes. A lot of second places, yeah. Um, geez, when you talk hockey again with people all the time, it's like, I don't know, that sucks because second place sucks, but also <laughs> getting put out first round where like the guys, you don't become friends forever by getting put out first round. You might have one or two buddies from the team, but like to really stay connected with everybody, Finishing second, you can still be connected with everybody, you know. <laughs> just uh, you're just a little more pissed off. <laughs> you remember the heartbreak, I guess. Yeah, I guess. There's still emotions. There's still emotions around it. It's just not the ones you want. Well, exactly. It's like my freaking kid bringing up silver stick every week. It's like, dude, I don't want to talk about it anymore. <laughs> we lost in a shootout, right? On his yeah. ninth birthday, it was tough. Tough day. <laughs> Shootouts are worse. Oh, isn't it? No. I'd rather play overtime like we did last night. And then, you know? Yeah, I feel like that's a little... Uh, that's hockey? Like, that's uh, what we grew up playing, not doing shootouts? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We'll leave it at that. Um, okay. So, you got drafted to Chicago while you're at St. Mike's? Yeah. Yeah. So, um that's be pretty cool. Never happened for me. So did you knew you were going and you knew you were going to be drafted? You just didn't know where and when? Well, I, so I missed my, my draft year. I, I didn't play very much. So I, I didn't expect to really get drafted. And um, so the following year, um, I think I, I didn't know exactly. I, I, I had a hunch that I was going to go. I talked to a bunch of teams that is when you're, when you're not going like, you know, top, two rounds you, you yeah you, you talk to most teams right because they got you got a chance of going anywhere really so um i had talked to a bunch of teams so i figured i, I probably would go but um i think i went a little earlier than i thought so i was, I was what happy. were you out with that year what do you mean like you thought? said you didn't play much were you hurt no the, the year before like in my, in my true draft year i i just didn't play much he uh oh he you didn't get much ice time it was my rookie year. Yeah, in the OHL, you may not play much your rookie year, right? It's just the way it is because those other guys are a lot bigger and stronger or whatever, right? You're just getting used to it. I remember that. Okay, I, th I thought maybe you got hurt and you missed time. Well, no. Okay, well, fourth round, that's still pretty high up, eh? So then uh, after that Memorial Cup, then you signed your first deal? You signed an entry-level deal with Chicago? No, I signed uh, a one-year American League one-way American League deal in Rockford. And uh, that was uh, the end of that season. I signed the uh, three-year entry level. So they gave you that just to f for one year, like after you're drafted? Yeah, I, I guess to prove myself or whatever. Um, looking looking back at it, I honestly kind of... It's kind of weird, isn't it? Like you're yeah. drafted by them and they're only giving you a one-way A deal? Yeah. Because you yeah. went to the Memorial Cup. I The research team had it here at one point. But um, you went to the Memorial Cup. You were one of the leading scorers on the team, and your team's really good and almost winning the OHL, and then you get a one-way A deal, and you're – Yeah. No, I was I was actually – at the time, I was pretty pissed off because uh, I did really well in the Memorial Cup. Um, I did uh, – I think you should have well, been pissed off. I find it kind of weird. Yeah, yeah. But, um, and honestly, I almost kind of wish that I uh, went back and played my overage year because that would have been pretty damn fun. I, I wanted to go back and play in London, actually, and that would have been a blast. But um, it's kind of fun making money, too, though, right? Right. So, yeah, I know I got offered that and I just, I just thought, whatever. I thought I was going to be there, you know, um, in the American League playing a bunch. So I took it. And uh, yeah, you know what, I, I ended up uh, pretty much, well, they sent me down to the coast, which they said they wouldn't do right away, which, you know, what? it's not the end of the world. I, I probably should have played in the coast for a while, but um, I, I was up and down then. And then I didn't really play much that first year in the American League until the end. And uh, I did pretty well the last like maybe 15, 20 games and ended up getting the uh, entry level. So it, it uh, no, that, that, that did work out. Yeah. Worked your way up. Um, 
it is interesting, eh? When you sign that one way A deal, that's what I had. And then yeah. like when you, you get sent to the coast, you can really have some piss in your Cheerios, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I was I, I was upset. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? Like I kind of uh looking back at it, playing in the American League the way I was too, because I was kind of I was on the fourth line, not playing much, but I was kind of staying there because I was fighting and that'll keep you in the lineup, but it doesn't keep you you're yeah, not getting better at hockey and you're no. not, you're, you're going to, that you're, you're, that's going to be your role, right? You're not going to, it's going to be hard to get away from that, especially once you start fighting. So I kind of, I think it kind of hurt me that way because you know, there's that American league rule. You can only, uh, is it 280 games until you, you become a, a vet? Yeah. It changes all the time. Research team doesn't know that stuff. I know it changed when I first started was when it first got going and then I think they made the rules even stricter, right? Like, I, I don't even know anymore. Yeah, yeah. right now it's a total young league, so I think it is different. But well, and I, You know what it is. It's the owners try not to pay people, and then they, they make the – it's it's not even – they're not a team. They're just young kids learning the game. It's not like they're signing players to try and win championships. They're just bringing in kids to see who's going to end up being maybe the one that moves up to the NHL, right? Mm, yeah. But then back then we kind of had, you know, you have the coach that wants to win because he wants to go up too. You'd hope so. Yeah. But I wish, I wish I had played in the coast, you know, got a ton of uh, minutes and then, you know, you don't ride up your games played in the American league and kind of avoid yourself. Right. Or you, uh, you do the overage year in the OHL and then you get to play a ton. You get to run a muck. You get to be the man. And then you, then you show up to pro another season ready to rock without any AHL games, right? Well, that was my, yeah, that was the idea. I wanted to do that. But the, uh, the general manager there in Rockford was a little bit of a piece of work and he was uh, really didn't want to let me go and just kind of wanted to, you know, basically t- show you he's the boss and whatever. And it was just kind of a whole thing. So I wasn't allowed to leave. And then, but yeah, like I said, yeah, I ended up signing and it's okay. The one thing I f- found out, or at least my my experience in the AHL East Coast, which is very minimal, and I'm sure there's lots of different coaches out there, but the coach yeah. in the East Coast was a teacher. He helped me. He was trying to improve me as a pro, as a person. Um, yeah. He taught me so much about the game of hockey and about how to be a pro. But then when I'd go up to the AHL, it was either you can either do it or you can't. Are you ready to do this or not? Because we're not teaching you and we're not helping you. If you're not in the lineup, we're going to bag skate you and we're not going to talk to you until we send you down. (laughs) Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. (laughs) That's what mine was anyways. Okay. So then you get traded or you got trade. So then you sign the entry level deal. Then the next season you get traded. Yeah. I did uh, basically a full season after I signed uh, with with, uh, Rockford. I signed with Chicago and then um, uh, it was the, it was the lockout year actually. So I ended up, uh, I thought, you know, I'm coming back my second year. I'm going to get some minutes this year. You know, I'm going to get a chance. And uh, no, I didn't. I, I didn't get the chance. And you know what? I, I was 20. I had a pretty piss poor attitude. I, I was pissed off. I didn't get. Uh, you don't play as well like, when you're pissed off either, do you? No, no. And like, yeah, it's just. Uh, I wish I had a better attitude about it for sure. But, you know, it was um, me too. I remember when I went to the coast, I wish I would have had a better attitude because it took me a couple months to get going. Once I like got mentally adapted to like being down there and that's where I was. uh, That's when I started doing better. Right. But yeah, so we, we asked for a trade and I got picked up by Boston and uh, it was hard. It was hard to go to a whole new team, new organization. Um, I ended up really liking the coach there. Uh, Bruce Cassidy, but uh, it was pretty damn hard to uh, play for him at first. He's kind of, uh, he's hard, he's intense. He's not shy to call a guy out in front of everybody and, you know, put you on the, on the main stage there and rip you a new one. So it took me a while to kind of uh, ease into that. So it's another. Get used to it. Yeah. But uh, I ended up, I ended up learning a ton from him. He's a great coach. One of the best I've ever had. Yeah, that's interesting. One of my questions I ask people is uh, most influential coaches. Would you say he's up there then? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, oh, pro, I would have to say um, as a player, I, like 
as a team coach, he was great, you know, like adjusting mid game, um, doing things that worked against teams, watching what they're doing. And that was the biggest thing I noticed, like between periods, you know, if we were rimming the puck and they're, they're, they're pinching down the wall and we weren't getting out of our zone ever. He would he adjust. Up, have the D, you know, come around, wheel a little more, have the winger take off and like think little things like that that you learn. And then just, um, basically as a player too, you know, I didn't know what the heck I was doing after a while there, you know, you lose all your confidence, you forget how to play the game. And he'd just be like, <laughs> I remember him just shredding me and like, Rob, what the hell are you doing out there? Oh, I don't know. It's like, why don't, why don't you take the puck, protect it and bring it to the net? And then they, yeah, no. And then they say something that makes sense that it's like, Oh yeah, you're right. I was overthinking. I was trying to do, and then you're like, you're right. I should have just done that. Right. They just kind of simplify it. Right. Yeah. But he had like, he had answers, right. Because you get coaches where they yell at you, they scream at you. And, like, but they're like, not telling you what you should do differently. No, exactly. You don't learn from that. Like, do you have, a, do you have a game plan? Do you know what you want? And then maybe you can tell me and I can do it. But if you don't, then it's just kind of, you know, you just kind of bash the guy's confidence, bring him down more. But no, I thought, uh, I thought I picked up a lot from him. Huh. Yeah, no, I, yeah, he's never came up on in the shed before. I don't really know many people that were in the Bruins organization. There's been quite a few Blackhawk organization guys. You ever meet, was Matt Carruth a goalie in Rockford? Yes, sir. Well, uh, I think I just played with him at camp actually. But oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So he's, uh, he's the guy we're helping out there with uh, raffling off the Jersey and stick on the website, aleshockeytails.com folks. And we have clothes up for sale, all sorts of shit the guys do it in the UK. It's pretty wild stuff. Um, anyways, okay. So in Providence, research team was hot, though. Casty's the coach. And you know how it is when an AHL coach that does well. You guys are probably pretty good? The year I You don't got, get called up to the AHL to the NHL as a coach unless you guys are pretty good. Yeah. The year I got there, they were really, really good. Um, I think they won the league and, or the, they placed – they were first so you showed team. up for playoffs that year. I did pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. So then did you played with Pasternak? Yeah. Yeah. He was special. Yeah. So he was that good in the AHL. Oh Jim. yeah. How, how old would he have been back then? I... 18, I think. Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, he, he's doing all right. <laughs> so, th so then you stay there for a while. Um, I got here 2014, 15 K uh -huh. <laughs> right around when I'm winning a challenge cup in Cardiff with Carl. Um, you score 19 goals in the AHL. Do you feel like you're close to a call up? Uh, I don't know if I really expected to be called up then. I, after that year, um, I signed with Florida, and I think I had a chance, uh, but I just, I just didn't have it. I didn't. Uh, yeah, if you I, if I quite there, there, what's that? You don't think you're quite there, or what? No, I, I just uh, that that year, I wanted to, um, you know, carry on from that season, get a 19 goals, and I just, um, I don't know, I couldn't. I, I found it hard to play for that coach, and I kind of got, you know, you just get in your own. So head. that's when you switched to Portland. Or you had a new coach in Providence? No, uh, Portland was a different coach. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, yeah. The, but the year 2014-15 was with with Providence, and when you get 19 goals, like you'd think you're you're getting not closer, no? But I guess Boston's a good NHL yeah. team, and they don't really call guys up just to call them up, right? No, we we had a pretty deep lineup, and uh, like you, you know. I, I think I was leading the team in goals, but that's because, you know, our, our best players are going up to the NHL and missing games and coming down or whatever. The like, AHL is this whole different world in yeah. hockey, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay. I now it may, Okay. So then you sign with Florida, go to Portland. You do all right there. Anything to talk about in Portland? Uh, yeah. You know what? I just, I was okay, but didn't, didn't, didn't do much. I wanted to, you know, carry are, over. The season. Are you getting close to being a vet by then? Yeah, so that was my um, – I, I went over the mark that year, I think. So the following year, I had I would have been considered a vet. And, you, you know, I just didn't do well enough to uh, be signed as a vet, I guess. So had to uh, had to go to the coast. And um, I had a wicked year. It was, uh, it was uh, – Yeah, I saw that. So you played for the South Carolina Stingrays. That's a nice spot, eh? <laughs> oh, it was – 
It's probably the most enjoyable year of my life. Yeah. Yeah. Shorts, flip flops. Yeah. Sunburns on the beach. Um, a little hockey at night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it was a uh, great lifestyle there. Holy smokes. Yeah. And then what's the travel like though, when you're in the coast compared to the A is pretty much the same thing. You're still getting on buses. Yeah. But I mean, it, well, I guess it was, it was different when I was uh, with Rockford in the Western conference there, we, we would have some, uh, main you'd fly, fly flights. Yeah. Down to Texas and whatever. But, um, there was a lot of three and threes on the East side. So you're busing, but they were pretty close. Whereas the coast we would have, you know, I think a nine hour bus trip turned into a 20 hour bus trip once and the bus broke down and it's, uh, can be, uh, those you know, buses do down. break down in that league. Oh yeah. 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 Get picked up by the fan bus, hop on the bus with them. Play the next day. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Or I like, sleep on the floor, sleep everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. The, in, that part's interesting, but I can see how you're having fun, right? You're enjoying the game. You're playing to the coast. There's not as much pressure. You're the man now, right? Well, yeah. And like just being in a, in a place like that, you know, when the sun is shining, you're when the sun is shining, can it not change your day? Well, absolutely. The sun is, uh, yeah, that's our happy, uh, that's our happy source right there. That's, <laughs> Without that, it's uh, pretty sullen, pretty good, pretty, uh, grim out there you know i agree no it really does help um so that year you guys are good and um playoffs okay Mm -hmm. 22 games played 22 points so you almost won again yeah oh that was a tough one we had Ah. i think we kind of burned ourselves out by the end got uh got swept in the finals but they were all close games i mean who'd you play over time played colorado they the eagles or something oh okay yeah, um yeah. we did the same thing in dayton we burnt out in the finals too we won the first game and then got swept <laughs> yeah 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 you it, you could feel it too though hey eh? when the boys have battled so hard they get to a certain point and then you can see the other team still got more steam than you and you're like ah shoot <laughs> yeah no it's yeah, it's pretty uh, depressing going that far and then losing, but it's a yeah. lot of extra games on the body. I remember yeah. how ruined I was after going to the finals in the coast, man. I played 102 hockey games that year. Yeah, holy smokes. Yeah. I think I I think I calculated it too. It was something around that. Crazy. By the time you do preseason and then you do the AHL preseason, you yeah. do and that oh man. And then the travel, and then you're like, and then they say, Oh, you gotta gain 10 pounds of muscle in the off season. You're like, well, I got eight weeks and I'm ruined right now. So I'm not really sure when to do that, but I'll try. <laughs> it's crazy to me that whole East coast mentality. Like the, some of the games are like a slap shot video. You got 10 forwards. So you play them all the time. You're doing three and threes and you play what like was it 76 games or something crazy and then like you said all those extra ones it's just holy the, the sunday afternoon games like when you've played friday saturday nights oh. in different towns and then you show up somewhere for a sunday afternoon game yeah. <sighs> you should have seen me in warm-ups didn't even yeah. move <laughs> <laughs> oh that, that was the part i was like you know what i'm so ready for europe to play 48 games a season yeah. and not really get hit and not really travel <laughs> it's bizarre for all those games you play and all that work you put in and you make no money none <laughs> so you're playing for the love of the game you're, you're not you just it. love it yeah <laughs> and then you go over to europe and you play half the amount of games and you make double so it's like <laughs> Yeah, that's Dude, weird. Yeah. And then you get to see cool shit and eat potato pancakes and potato dumplings, goose, exactly. duck, whatever you want. <laughs> and if you're lucky like you and your girl comes over with you, you can propose on the Charles Bridge. Well, and life's pretty good, eh? It sure is till it comes to an end. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's a real slap in the face. <laughs> yeah. 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 That, that happens. Um Old Carl's all grown up now, though, Ace. Oh, we're getting into his time. We're not there yet. I'm not going to talk about him yet. Okay. 
So a decision to leave to Europe is pretty easy. You have a great time in the coast, but like we said, you didn't really make that much money. Yeah. You get, so it's time. Um, how, who swings you the deal then? How do you get over to Europe? Cause you went to VLOC. That's a pretty big team, but I can see how you end up there because you have over a point a game in the coast. You're the leading scorer on your team in the playoffs. You almost win it. And uh, obviously you've had a ton of HL experience, but now you've proven you're also like over a point a game player in the coast. So then all of a sudden the, the European teams are like, Oh, so he can score too. eh? Well, I had a little bit of attention from, I told you I was trying to get that German pass. So Bremerhaven had contacted me the la- like the two years before when I was still, I was playing in the American league and on the coast, they were like, come play in the DEL. And I'm like, no, 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 I'm playing in the coast. I'm going to st- I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you just live in that, you want to, you want to play back home. You want to live the dream. And there's always that chance you can get called up. And it's like, but well, so I, I turned that down, which I definitely wish I didn't because it would have been cool. Maybe I would have got the passport if I would have left there. I, I don't know. Who knows? Probably not. You but, never know. When you look back on things, yeah. you don't know what would have happened. You never know. So, uh, I, I got, a I got hooked up with an agent. I, I don't know how I got a hold of him. Uh, maybe it was, maybe it was Facebook or something. I don't know, or an old teammate, but, um, he had a, yeah, the offer for me in VLOC and, um, yeah, it was pretty good. So I didn't know much about Europe at that point. So VLOC would have a lot of pressure. They, they're, well, I think they're not quite the top team or they used to be now. They, I don't think they're even that good. I don't really know that. They don't have the same same budgets as the top teams but they uh yeah yeah a lot of, a lot of pressure they're crazy there yeah no i europe europe could be like like we talked about making more money and playing less games but the pressure is completely different yeah well especially if you're uh coming over as an import and yeah they blame everything on you so it's yeah they think you don't speak the language and that they can just ridicule you in the newspapers <laughs> yeah yeah, pretty much. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, okay. Random question because I almost forgot about this. Um, should have been on the notes. Research team forgot it. So Carl and I chatted. Okay, and this is how you end up in the shed. Carl goes for lunch with you, and he says, "Hey, I'm out for lunch with Rob Flick. You should have him in the shed." I said, "Oh yeah," and he says, "Man, what a beauty!" And then I'm hooked. Right then, I watch in my shed. As soon as Carl says, "You're a beauty. You're a beauty," in my eyes. That's how the hockey world works. But he said, you're somewhat like him. He, him and Ali were talking about living off the grid and living up north off the land, which I don't buy now that they have kids. I think, uh, I think they're lying to themselves. I think it's all just a big pipe dream. But he was saying you might be making a, a miniature home deal. Yeah. yeah, well, that's the plan. I, I mean, it's not a plan. It's, it's going. I, you're uh, doing it. I'm doing it. It's being built as we speak. My, uh, my builder is actually in the uh, truck convoy right now. He's got, uh, there's a big community of truckers around there and they're, he's building somebody else's tiny home right now in the, uh, in the convoy. So he's like, I got a community of people here. Maybe uh, I can get it done faster. Whatever. He's like, can I start it here? I'm like, ah, yeah, yeah. Whatever you need to do. But uh, so I met this uh, tiny home builder. He's up, uh, nine mile road or something up that way he's got family in owen sound so he's right in the area um my really? sister found him actually and uh yeah so he's building my tiny home putting it on wheels so you don't uh need building permits or whatever uh, and you can live wherever you take that thing i can yeah but i got uh, i got pretty lucky um my neighbor uh my parents neighbor up there um he's across the road a little farther down up there where are you talking up there sorry uh bruce peninsula barrow bay is the area it's uh five minutes from lion's head if you're familiar with lion's head yeah uh 20 minutes north of wyerton so so you're gonna have your miniature home there that's where it's gonna go so i yeah so i met the uh farmer across the way from uh, my parents place and he's got a ton of land like-minded thinker and uh he's like yeah I'll rent you some land real cheap and uh, park it there. He's if, if you want to keep it there, you can, if you want to get up and leave it's on wheels. So there you go. Beauty. That sounds I, I was thinking. 
I was, I was already trying to buy land up there, but you, you can't finance land. And then you got to, uh, you got to build a cottage on it too. So I was going to buy a piece of land that I really liked the area, but it had a old junker cottage on it. So I would have had to rip that down. And then, and you know, you got to buy the land without financing. Then you got to build a house and it's pretty hard to get financing on a house like that. The mobile homes, you can't even really get them. So it's, I got really lucky. Didn't have to worry about the land and yeah. Wow, that's awesome. That's awesome. It's going to work out. So then that's going to be kind of the plan that in the summers and then maybe moving forward. Yeah. I don't know. I'm uh, I want to be as off grid as I can, but I'm going to have the, uh, the electricity and the propane there when I want convenience. But Wi-Fi. Uh, you know what? I don't think I'm going to do Wi-Fi. I might get a phone plan and just kind of use that. And then I don't know. We'll will see. you watch TV? I don't watch TV really. No, I don't either anymore. It's changed yeah. my life. I used to watch so much when I was playing in Europe. I, I watched so much TV it'd make you puke, but now I don't even turn it on. It's just garbage. Like I watch, uh, I, I, I follow cool, cool things on my, uh, I have telegram, there's groups, there's uh, people sharing videos, there's alternate sources of media and whatever. And I try to stick to that and uh, keep up with things the way they're going. But yeah, I just don't like. Uh, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, I do. Um, okay, moving on. So then you go from VLOC. How do you leave to go to Svolen, Slovakia? Uh, yeah, so uh, I really, I, I love the coach we had in VLOC, um, Greg Holst. And by the way, before we move on, congratulations on the mini home. I want more questions about that, but maybe they can wait till the end. We'll circle back. Don't worry. Yeah, right. Remind me, okay? Because I got more questions. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll wrap this up quick. Anyways, I no, uh, no, you're good. No, we got time. I don't have to work for another hour and six minutes. <laughs> no, just the uh, just just the boring hockey uh, talk. I'll wrap that. I won't. Yeah, I won't the boring hockey off. talk. <laughs> That's not, not why we're in the shed at all. <laughs> no, my career. My career is boring. <laughs> no, it's not. Are you kidding me? You played in like seven countries. You're only 30 no, years old, yeah. dude. No, and actually it is it is pretty damn interesting coming over here and the, the life you're living. It's wild. But isn't it different than like, everybody else? Like you're gonna have some tales to tell, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, so in VLAC, um, we we weren't we weren't doing well, and they they fired the coach that I think wa was a big reason that I came there. And he liked me and uh, he ended up getting, ended up getting fired. I, I don't know. I felt bad for him. He's a good guy. And I who is that? Who is, who is that? Yeah. Who is the guy? Uh, Greg Holst. Mm, don't know him. He was a legend. Uh, VLAC legend there. Played there for years. And, uh, and then they fought. Then they gassed him. They gassed him and the assistant coach took over and he was a complete turd. Uh, he had a, he had a dyed beard. You can't trust a guy with a dyed beard. Like, come on. I don't think I've ever even known a guy to dye their beard. Anyways, he came in. He didn't like me. And uh, so I figured it was time to leave. And, um, but you know what? It, it was a pretty big mistake uh, going to this hole. And that was uh, even worse situation there. The coach there was like some old Slovakian that didn't speak English. And just, they'd been through 11 imports that year. Just gas and imports bringing in new ones so and, and you see those teams over there they have no they don't care at all oh. um and like you're not really a person to them like you're just you're just the guy that's going out to score the goals and if you don't do it for a couple games smell you later yeah yeah and this guy just oh he was such a piece of shit but there yeah. are pieces of shit all over the hockey world did you know that oh yeah it's unbelievable yeah uh, well, you know what's cool? I got to tell this story now that it came up because we're talking about that. As I feel like I found a fan base of people that are just fantastic. So I'm a donkey, right? I, I'm just out in my shed crushing beers. And I made a whole bunch of jerseys and sold them before I realized how much shipping would be to the UK and that import tax when they got there. Oh, but, so I got, I got rinsed. I, I lost a bunch of money selling jerseys to fans of the shed, which is cool. The, the, the fan, the, the group picture this weekend will make it all worthwhile, but I, I somehow trying to organize this shit. I missed two jerseys that were supposed to go over. So there's two people expecting jerseys that have paid for them that 
aren't coming. And the one guy found out and I'm like, dude, it's my bad. I'm sorry. I looked through the messages. Totally should have been another Jersey. And I'm like, I'm going to, cause he's one of the creators. Cause I always say run in a muck. He wanted a run in the muck t-shirt made. So I'm like, yeah, let's do this. I'm like, I'm sending you one for my mistake and I'll get you a Jersey when the next batch comes in. He's like, no worries. I love what you're doing. I don't want you to be out more money. There's a dude that's already paid for his Jersey and didn't get it. Obviously I undersold him, but um, he tipped me a hundred pounds yesterday. Oh yeah. Craig back. What a fellow you are. I've never met you. I don't even know you, but you said, I don't want you out any more money for everything you're doing. And he just straight up sends me a hundred pounds and says, whenever you get me the Jersey fine. And I'm like, you know what, in a world where people are talking about how bad people are and all the bad things they're doing, you know what? There's a lot of great folks out there. Heck yeah, there is. Heck yeah, there is. There really is. Keep that community together. The, that's my shed yeah, family. So thanks, buddy. You're getting a run in the muck shirt. You're getting hats. And then to the other gal, I haven't told you. I forgot your jersey yet. So I'm going to have to break the news to you today. Uh, I'm not looking forward to it. It's like erasing someone's episode, you know? <laughs> yeah. It happens, though. Right? <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Happy. You can't. Um, so anyway, Slovakia. So it wasn't that great, but that's, so then you end up in Krimichau. That's where we meet Carl. That's, that's where we meet Carl. Carl's that's a beauty, a isn't he? <laughs> What's that? Your career has just taken, uh, yeah. it's just gone straight up since you met Carl. Yeah. I had just... a great time playing with Carl. He's one of my favorite teammates. Oh yeah. Yeah. He's a legend. And, he really uh, is. I, I actually, I, I ran into him, was it last summer or the summer before? Just by chance, crazy. I was at my parents' cottage and they were driving by and they what? saw me. They, yeah, and they saw me. Just They're just driving by the cottage. Didn't, we hadn't even talked. And uh, that's how I got connected with them again. Like, this oh, is up yeah. on the peninsula? Yeah, up on the peninsula. They were renting. He was up in the peninsula and he never told me? Yeah. What and year is this? Thought, what well, year he didn't is tell this? me either. This was by chance. I feel like I knew he was doing that and I should have been there. Yeah. Yeah. He was renting a cottage on the Lake Huron side. Now you're upsetting me even more. <laughs> yeah. Shoot. Um, I can never get enough Carl time. Yeah. We, so he was my neighbor in Cardiff and uh, we, we would have a blast. We oh, enjoyed yeah. the world of boats. We would go to playgrounds with my kids. Um, he's just one of those teammates, right? He's just, he's always in a good mood. He's always happy to be at the rink. He's always having fun around the boys, right? He is generally in a good mood. Whereas, like, I feel like my moods are going up and down, and I'm just like, oh, some days it's just like, holy smokes. Well, as right? long as you're aware of it, right? But, yeah, yeah. But that guy is, yeah, he's, he's generally in a pretty damn good mood, and that is hard to hard to come by. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I love being his neighbor. Yeah, fun times. So, we talked about Krimichau a bit, but you guys actually did pretty good that year. That's how you uh, get out of Krimichau, right? That's how you scored, what, what did I say? Four, 34 goals? Fear and dried sick tour? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a lot of goals in that league, man. That's more than I ever got. Well, yeah. I mean, I feel like that league's you, you can you can be in a good situation and, and get your points, and it's not that hard. But then, you know, there's – you got to have a good power play. You got to have a good couple line mates. You got to be clicking and – I guess that's anywhere, but you're right. But, but in that league, like your power play is crucial and the, your line mates are crucial. Cause it'll be probably playing with one other import and probably a German. And that'll be your top two lines will be two imports and a German, right? Yeah. And, and you, bet, about, you better have a good relationship with that other import. How about the, uh, how about the refereeing in that league though? There's probably like 20 penalties a game too. So you, Our you plays breathe, are important. <laughs> you, breathe, you breathe on a guy, he falls over, and it's a penalty. So it's like you gotta have a good power play. It's it's you know what I I my under the under eleven refing around here, it hasn't been that bad. You know, they know what they're refing. They know what it is. I think that the guys that ran the game last night are better refs than the second league of Germany. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah, it was. 
It was embarrassing to say the least. Was, was the was the fat slobby guy still there with the mustache that would just ten anybody up for saying anything to him? He'd make Dude. a terrible call and oh, then just oh. straight up ten them up as soon as you looked at him. I know exactly who you're talking about. He ten he ten me up. Uh, our last game in the playoffs, I went to the net. The puck was loose. I went to go hit it. And the goalie put his glove on it. And just as I hit the puck or like, you know, incidental contact, whatever the whistle. You're trying to score a goal. The whistle hadn't gone. <laughs> I'm trying to fucking keep the series alive. Boom. Last two minutes throws me in the box. I'm just like, they have no concept of the game and like that there's oh. lot, there's two minutes left and like you're trying to tie the game up. They have no concept of any of them. Oh my God. It was just atrocious. So I motherfucked them, you know, obviously yeah. even 10, whatever, but the game was over. It was already over. We lost. Like, thanks, but I, the, the only 10 I think I took over there was I scored a goal. The puck was loose around the crease and I shot it into the back of the net. Mm-hmm. And like, cause it was a bit of a melee. Nobody saw me shoot it into the back of the net. And I'm, I start celebrating and the ref doesn't know why. So he's like looking and I'm like, it's in the net. And he's like, and he still is confused. And I'm like, it's in the net. <laughs> right. And then he's like 10. <laughs> and I'm like, ah, oh. so you're saying I scored, but instead of scoring, I got a 10 minute penalty. Yeah. yeah. Keep it up. <laughs> Don't embarrass me like that. How dare you? Yeah. <laughs> oh God. Those you're right. Those refs are awful in that league. Never really yeah, came up before. You can't. Yeah. You just can't really battle for pucks or anything like it's. Yeah. So I usually do player reviews. Eh? you wouldn't know this, but I usually do player reviews based on how you pod and I've never seen you play. So this could be an authentic one. Did you know that? Player reviews based on what? How you pod. How you come to the shed, oh, chat? Chat. Oh, okay. okay. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Absolutely. I don't know. I've never seen you play. Uh-huh. Okay. Here we go. All right. Back in the day, you'd do anything to make to make it. Um, so you were fighting. You were doing whatever it took. You're big, tall, and strong. Don't look at me. You're big, tall, and strong, and you look like you could fight anybody. But you're actually really skilled, and you got a hell of a snapper on you. You like, you know, the last name flick, you can really flicker. Um, and I'm thinking, you know, sometimes they even put you on the half wall to just walk off the half wall and take a snapper. But then sometimes coaches like, you know what? We want him in front of the net because he's so big and strong. And then sometimes we're like, no, we need him in the slot guy to just be the trigger guy because of that flicker. So you've kind of played all three different positions in your career on the power play. Which one do you like the most? Wow, that was generous, but uh, I appreciate that. that was, was it right or no? Was I wrong? I mean, I'm in a. It was a little bit generous on the skill, uh, on the skill compliment, but you know what? I'm taking it. And uh, did I say you were skilled? I said you could shoot it hard. Well, you, 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 said, you said you said a fight, but I'm skilled. I was like, oh, okay, you know what? <laughs> um, no, but like. I th- I don't know. I think uh, the, from looking at the goals you scored, I think you got a shot on you. Um, you. I don't know how fast you are because you're playing in the Czech league. You got to be pretty fast, but you're also big and strong. You can't be that fast. Hips are, uh, hips are an issue for me. I don't, uh, <laughs> I was going to say, cause it like, yeah, yeah. I, no, I don't feel too quick these days, but uh, no, my favorite spot on the power play is that, uh, well, when I was in Krimichau, I got to play there and it was awesome. I just got to rip one timers the whole time. And I, where I got, was it the, in the slot? The, the one time on the elbow. So not the half on the flank. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's my, that's my favorite spot. I'm actually there right now. So you're saying like where the one guy's running the half wall, the passer, and you're on the far side, you're like in the Ovechkin spot. Would love. Yeah. That's, that's the dream come true. That's the favorite spot. If I got to pick anywhere. I hated playing in the middle when they put me there one year in Hellbron. Like I hated it so much. I never touched the puck. And then all of a sudden they're like, you're just a shooter. You just shoot it. I'm like, I disagree. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the thing. If you don't have a silky guy on the half wall feed that can feed that guy in the middle, you're you're irrelevant. you're just standing there spinning around looking at everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Over here. Oh, oh uh, hey, 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 it's still open. Still. Oh, you want me to bump it? Oh, okay. <laughs> hope, go to the net and hope to get a rebound. Yeah. Yeah. No, I. I yeah. No. So, anyways, the rest of the player review though is uh, I think you're a winger up and down the wing. Um, big shot and. Uh, I don't know what else I got. You can beat people up when you want to. Um, 
And uh, you're you're a top, you're I'd say you're a second line player for teams to win the championship in Europe. But if you're in the second league of Germany, you're obviously the top dog. But I'm talking about like the big leagues. Yeah, yeah. Here it's uh, it's definitely a different league. I'm uh, I was playing a lot of winger up and down, but I'm center here. Are they you? Want me, they want me winning faceoffs. So um, yeah, they they don't even really care about me um, putting up points here, which is kind of bizarre because I feel like you know I'm I'm struggling a little bit as of late. The last five games, I think I got donuts. So. They, uh, I'm thinking, you know, if I can score some goals here, we can win some games. But they're like, yeah, you know, just win your face-offs, play tough, and uh, don't get scored on. It's very, very technical here, like uh, uh, structured trap, dump, chase. There's not a whole lot of chances from five on five. And I recall seeing people go to the check, and I'm like, geez, there's not many points getting put up over there, right? It can be a freaking battle. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. No, I had a tough league, eh? Yeah, yeah, it's just so so structured and so much trapping and like, ugh. and it's on big ice. Yeah, that too. Like, yeah, it's exhausting. It does, you think that gives you more room, but really, it just makes you got to beat the guy more than once, right? Like, by the time you beat a guy, there's another guy there. By the time you get close to the net, and you're like, there's another guy now. Fuck, right? Oh, uh, it is. Yeah, I used to think like as a kid. I'd be like, oh, big ice. Yeah, so much room. No, no, it's way harder. Way, way harder. harder. Yeah. Okay. So you run a muck in Krimachow with the ice paratins, right? Um, have a great time with Carl. Good for you. I had a great time with him too. So then the next season, you obviously signed a bigger ticket with Ravensburg. Now you're on the big ticket team in the second league, eh? Well, that was, uh, that was the year that I, um, you know, held out for uh, something good, which uh, didn't end up coming. And I actually had to scramble and the, uh, after 34 goals in the second league. eh? Yeah. Yeah. And the agent I had, the only team he knew was Robinsburg. So he got me a deal there and they already had five imports and it was just a, it was a shit show, but yeah, I ended up going to the team that I should have gone to in the first place. I, I tell you, like the start of a season when those teams signed six imports to start a season, it's like, why didn't you spend the extra money on that sixth import on really topping up the real five that are going to play? <laughs> As if they think that that is going to help the team. Oh, they really got to play well to stay in the lineup. So that's going to make them play better. Instead, you're way more stressed out, right? Oh, stressed as hell. You can't make a play because you're, you're, you're freaking out about it. Then you hate your teammates. And it's because you're like, battling with them. You think yeah. you want to go for lunch with the guy that might take your spot? <laughs> oh, and I just, I came in there. I felt like a freaking wiener. Like, because you're the, of- you're the new guy. They signed their five guys and now you're the new guy saying, Hey, I'm here. And the, that team had a bunch of, uh, they had, they had a few German guys that didn't like any of the imports too. So you, you have, Oh that. yeah. I yeah. only had that once or twice in Germany. It wasn't a thing in Lansuit. It wasn't a thing in beating no, like- until my last year there. Then my last year there, or last two years there, they brought in some young guys that were like, obviously they had learned it from elsewhere. And then yeah. they brought it in that like, Oh, did you see this? The imports are stealing points. They're doing this or they're doing that. And then he starts telling this to the other kids. And then they're like, then all of a sudden it just was the worst downward spiral I've ever seen. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a good, uh, it's, it's not a good team mentality to have. Like it just ruins teams. And Germany has those teams. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, they do. So anyways, okay. You played there for nine games and you got over there to early. Znoimo, Znoimo, Orly Znoimo. Yeah, it was a, Orly Znoimo. That was a hard one for me for a while there. Yeah, it was hard for you. It was hard to pronounce. The uh, oh, the, I got you. Yeah. Uh, so what what town's that, and where is that? Uh, it is right on the border of Austria, about an uh, I guess under an hour from Vienna, and. Um, close to Brno in Czech, um, very close to uh, Prague and um, huh. it, uh, no, sorry, it wasn't close to Prague. It was close. To, I was thinking of the other one. It's close to Vienna. So very, very close to Vienna. 
And that's Slovakia? That's Czech. Orly was in Czech? Yeah. In the Austrian league. So yeah. do you ever find out why they're in that league instead of the Czech league? I think just like they're right on the border. So they have those, uh, those Austrian league teams that are close to Austria and probably just a budget thing you think, right? Yeah. Yeah. Could be. Yeah, for sure. Um, anyway, so you did well there though, eh? 38 points, 34 games. And, uh, that, so what's that season like? Uh, yeah, I came in there late and, um, they uh, needed a centerman. Um, Luciani was there doing really well, and they wanted someone to play with him. So I got paired up with him, and uh, he's a guy that gets points day in, day out, every single year. So um, if you kind of give the puck to him, things are going to happen. So uh, I tried to do that as much as possible. What was his name? Uh, Anthony Luciani. He's been there. Oh, I know that name, yeah. Yeah. I've, yeah. Little wild man, but he is uh, he can play, he can he can create offense. So, I got to play with him. We had a good group of guys there, uh, a lot of good imports, uh, like six of us had a good group. And then, uh, the check isn't guys. that the most important thing in Europe, though? Yeah, like if 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 any coaches or GMs who probably won't be listening in Europe because they all know what they're doing and they're all right other than like in the UK where they all like talk and figure shit out together. But like, if you have a group of imports that all get along and all good character people, Mm -hmm. you win a lot more games than getting the highest scoring people and paying them the most money or hiring an extra import just to piss everybody off. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can't believe that whole Del two mentality with that. It's just bananas to me. That whole league's mentality when it comes to yeah. some things is wild. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, but then, and then you get on a team. Like I, the, my first couple of years in that league, it wasn't like I, it was like it was the biggest team I've ever been on. And it was like a family in Lansuit and Beatingheim. And it was the, the people we had on the team, it was the character of the people. And, um, and then when you get teams and you, I would hear about it on other teams. I'm like, well, that German doesn't like the imports. They're not nice to the imports. And it's like, how could you not be nice to your teammates? I don't know. I just, I don't get it. I don't how get, could you show up to the rink and like, just be a dick? <laughs> I, I don't. Yeah. I never understood that, but it, it was really a lot of the guy. I remember when I was in Slovakia, it was a big thing. Like some of the guys, the imports that were there, were like, Oh yeah, these guys don't like us. And they're like, that's even that's even a thing like I, I didn't know that but i guess they're very competitive there and they think you're coming to steal their jobs or they're they think they'd get paid more if you weren't there i think so i think so but like don't, somebody else would just come like, exactly like like just be happy with what you got yeah it's got <laughs> nothing to do with me right? exactly there's a lot of us out there yeah. <laughs> um okay so then you do well there and uh I guess one thing one guy told me uh, back when I was young going to Europe was he's like, you got to find a place where like you're a fan favorite fans matter. Like Mm -hmm. if you're a fan favorite, they'll just keep you. You've had, you've switched a bunch. eh? So you went from there after a really solid year. Why just switch from there? That's you waited again from Zanoimo. Yeah. You went to (laughs) Jedge McVac Hungary. Yeah, so well, that was that uh, COVID year. So, oh right, that's they, what happened. They, they decided not to pay me my entire last paycheck, so that that was not really uh, cool. Uh, that's not really that nice people to do uh, when you sign a contract. No, contracts don't really mean anything over here. I feel like uh, depending on where you are, but uh, they uh, got to do your research, players. <laughs> but that, uh, yeah, that dug deep. I was pretty freaking pissed off about that but you know what um the head coach uh Miroslav Freicher so uh, you're uh, saying the team you did really well for still owes you a month pay oh yeah 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 they uh they just they 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 pretty well said we're not paying you this move on yeah 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 pretty hard to go back there the next year then eh yeah exactly and they actually (laughs) so they they went down to the third Czech league um the following year because they didn't want to pay us. So they, they knew they wouldn't be able to play in the league. 
if they didn't pay us. So they went down to the third league and now they're back. Yeah. But, they go bankrupt and then work their way back up. Right. But uh, yeah. And then after that, I just, I, I thought I had a pretty good year. I was like, Oh, you know, I'll get, I'll get something decent. Nothing. Played signed for like, um, you know, free hockey equipment in uh, Hungary, basically. And, just to uh, play, just to do something. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that was a, uh, Oh my God, that team was uh, in shambles. We had, uh, this is Jedge Mavek in Hungary <laughs> in the Slovakian league. Yegish Medvik. Yegish Medvik. Yegish Medvik. The polar bears. The, yes. the polar bears. That's cool. Uh, that's the old cool. Almira has the polar Kings. In, okay. uh, for, that's their old timer team, but that's where I'm from. Okay. Um, anyways. So that's interesting. That's in the Slovakian league too. eh? Yes. So that's yeah. the bottom yeah. of the barrel Slovakian league or what? Uh, they bad? We were, yeah, we were not good. And uh, it was funny. I came in there from that early normal team. I was, I was playing center, I uh, had a ton of points. So I was like, oh, you know what? I'll, I'll probably be, you know, I should be the first line center here, I think, or, or like high at least. Yeah. In there. And uh, he's like, yeah, you're only playing wing. Uh, I was playing the half wall shooters thing on power play. You're only in front of the net. Okay. Um, you're not penalty killing. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, very limited five on five ice. He had, uh, I think it was. Who's he playing over here? <laughs> oh, so this is it. He, he had 18 year old hungarians that he was yeah. playing i'm i'm like I'm, I'm, it's just uh yeah it, this re- yeah yeah well, we're beat like 10 nothing it's like oh okay all right and uh i think he yeah the coach there was uh there's some there's some guys that just don't get it over there there really is some guys that don't get it at all it's interesting when you go to europe and like when you see like i don't know there's there's guys that just are very un well, this was people. This was an old. Uh, he actually coached in the NHL. Our, our coach at that time. Um, really, but that was uh, many moons ago, and I think maybe he's uh, not games the changed. <laughs> games changed. Maybe not the same person anymore. I don't think he was uh, ten out of ten sharp anymore. But um, uh-huh. yeah, so we uh, we had a tough season there, and then I got. Uh, I told you the the agents uh, contacted me through uh, Facebook and. He said, yeah, we got an offer for you here in uh, the extra league, guys. <laughs> okay, let's go. <laughs> yeah, no shit. Yeah. So you got from there to the Czech Super League. Yeah, yeah. And then did you sign for the rest of that season and the next? Uh, yeah, option. And then I, I signed uh, around playoff time. Today. Beautiful, beautiful. So I would say we're getting near the end of your career, right? Yeah. I, uh, research team, you know, we look up some pictures sometimes for the poster or whatever. Um, you did do some fighting. Um, so who was, uh, the toughest guy you fought and who was, who beat you up the worst? Ooh. Uh, Oh, actually, um, I got, I got beat up pretty good in Providence. Um, it's a younger kid than me. So I didn't really respect him much. I was like, ah, I can whatever and i was just it was funny i was just watching all these videos um like old time hockey fights like uh chris nylon and uh, actually, you know they're old it was like tony twist and bob prober i was watching these guys and you know they they were the old style they just bang 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 like straight right straight right no protection nothing so and i'm they, like they did that for years oh for years like how uh yeah. how did they wake up to play the next day um yeah i mean substance abuse maybe rest in peace to some most of them but like yeah that's not uh it's not healthy formula for health no but anyways i, I was all gung-ho i was like i'm gonna do my next fight like that <laughs> so i uh it was i think it was scott sabrin is that I don't know, yeah. scott sabrin i don't i don't i know the name but i don't remember him being a fighter uh yeah he's a fighter i think he's in the nhl up and down right now with ottawa maybe Oh, that guy. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I've heard that name. Maybe that's not his first name. No, right? that's no, you're right. That's the guy that like has worked his way up, grinded out in the minors. Right. Yeah. And finally started getting yeah. some traction. Right. Good for him. Yeah. He's, and he's, I heard, yeah, he had, he has some respect around players. Right. Yeah. I, I yeah. know what you're talking about now. But anyways, I got it. I got one to fight in with him and I was just like, I'm going for it. Right. Let's go. <laughs> and this guy, he, you could tell in the summer he goes home and he works Tra- he trains. He's, he's working on it. 
So he just, yeah, I think he did like the old block here, started spinning me around. I, I punched his arm a few times. He was spinning me around. Then he's a lefty, grabbed me, and he gave me about three right in the face, just bang, bang, bang. I was like, what, what the heck just happened there? And uh, that, that was one of the, I think that was one of the fights I really, I was just like, I got, I got beat up there. Like, wow. Yeah. I don't know what happened. But um, you didn't get beat up often, though, eh? No, I, I, I didn't really. I mean, I, I was kind of selective. I, I didn't really try to fight uh, the experts, uh, the uh, heavy, heavy, heavyweights. Uh, I didn't really want to do that, but I, I got into it with them a few times. Like, it's impossible not to, but uh, especially, yeah, your size. Yeah, for sure. The toughest guy that I fought. Oh, man. I don't know. Uh, do you think a lot of it's technique though? Like, cause you're saying he could spin you and he had the arm up. Like you're saying they all learned the technique and what was working. And then that's kind of when they had to start trying to make people not do it as much. And <laughs> Well, the toughest guy that I, I, I played with, well, actually, no, I mean, there was a couple, but uh, I'll, I'll use this guy as an example, Trevor Gillies. He, he is. Uh, he's come up a few times on the pod. Yeah. He's a nail gun. Like the guy has, he throws, we call it toasters. He's, he's got toasters on both hands. <laughs> Head on, I'm like, you wouldn't believe. But he is technically amazing at fighting. Like, he knows the percentage of winning and losing each grapple and each battle. So he, he wants to put you in a situation. He's where, an expert. Like, yeah. He's, oh, yeah. He's a black belt in hockey fights. Yeah. And, and, and they, and they, they, they knew what they were good at. And they knew how they could make money. And they made sure they could do that. But they also, I thought were the best teammates you could have because they were also willing to stay out and shoot yeah. pucks. Even if you're in criminal, <laughs> if you, if you didn't have respect for that guy that was going out and doing that on your team, you're a clown. You, oh yeah. If you're going to, if you're going to disrespect that guy, I'm sorry. I don't want you on my team. Like, if, Oh, if and that's, have... that's why there's some of my best buddies is I like, I, I can't believe they could do it night in and night out, but also that they would do it a lot of times for me. Well, yeah. Well, that's the thing. They're doing it for you for one. And for two, I don't want to do that. So thank you. And like, you don't, you don't disrespect them. Like, that's no, it. no. And, and, and it, it's, uh, there's the heavyweights, but then there's also just the genuine great dudes that are just teammates through and through. I remember in the lockout, we talk about that. Bruno Gervais, I don't really know him. He showed up for like seven games in the second league in Germany. We go play in Krimichau, actually. And this German D-man, this big guy, I think he's a Canadian with a German pass, Martel or something. But this kid crushes me mid-ice. I get a suicide pass. I, I get hit hard. It was my fault. I didn't protect myself. But mm -hmm. as soon as that hit happens, an NHL player on my team, Bruno Gervais, steps up and fights this guy in the second <laughs> league in Germany. And I'm like, dude, you might break your hand. Don't fight for me. What do you do? <laughs> yeah. You got to go back to the NHL soon. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But, yeah. and that's why though, that a guy like that makes it right. He just would do yeah. anything for anybody. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are we done talking about hockey yet? Hey, that's up to you. I, I agree. I don't know. So all the check league. So then you leave that league get to the check league that's awesome shout out to your agents for getting you there and getting out of that um sure. right and that was during all the baloney yeah well it was pretty hilarious because the uh facility that i was at and that's in the hungarian team was uh, don't get me wrong it had everything they were really nice in the organization but it went from basically um feeling like i was playing triple a hockey to playing in the nhl when i came over here it's just like holy smokes I feel like a professional again, you know, and that, that that's nice. It, it really is the way you're treated, the way you're respected, the way you're dealt with it, it changes how you play hockey on the ice. Right. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like yeah. terrific, uh, gym, terrific, uh, rink, terrific wellness spa area, two saunas, hot tub, showers, cold tub. Like you can take care of the body. I like, yeah, I like the sauna. Don't like the cold tub much. Hey, whatever you need. You got to listen to the body, right? Uh, I try to. Just been screaming a bit lately. <laughs> oh, <that's good. laughs> um, okay. So 
this mini house. Do you got drawings for it? Do I have what for it? Like drawings, like what you want. What's in this mini house? What goes on? Uh, yeah, yeah, I made a little floor plan, but you uh, made a floor plan. So then, how big is it? It's thirty six feet by ten feet. Okay, so there'll be a bathroom in it. Yeah, so I got uh, master bedroom, full ceiling, because I I don't want to crawl into a little dungeon, a little you know. nook, right? But, you know, you, you you got the lady in there. You want it to be comfortable, right? Yep. Stuff happens in there. It's, mm -hmm. it's and you could call uh, it. You could call it the uh, workbench, right? The workbench, absolutely. You gotta have room on the workbench. You can't be banging your head and stuff. You know. Yeah, anyway. absolutely. You gotta keep it organized. Okay. Right. We get the full size uh, bedroom. I think with a small loft over top of it. You know, let's do the main floor first. Um, we got the bedroom, and then you got the living space. Um, it's a decent sized living space. We we'll have a couch. Uh, maybe a pull-out couch for what are you um, gonna do in the winters you haven't thought of that eh? you you've been coming home in the summers what what do you mean what am i gonna do well like it's cold man like there's not much going on around here in the winters if you're up in the bruce peninsula in that i mean there's not much room to spread your wings then eh? you're gonna have to be outdoors yeah i mean there's uh, a <clears throat> i i like uh I, I would love to try ice fishing. I haven't done that yet, but uh, I've never done it either. It seems okay. Yeah, it seems pretty wicked to me. But um, yeah, we're we're, uh, we're on a farm, so I'm learning how to farm as well. So uh, there's going to be animals; they're going to have to be taken care of. Um, there's lots of lots of stuff to do. So um, yeah, so you're saying like after hockey, what what are you thinking of doing, or is this like are you going to try and figure this all out on your own? Uh, yeah. You don't so need. I don't know. I am debating uh, whether I'm going to hang them up this year or not, but uh, I'm ready. Uh, I'm ready to go either way. But I, I, like I said, I got really lucky with this land and uh, the farmer, he wants some help around the farm and I want to learn how to farm and I want to raise my own animals. I want to eat my own food. So, uh, yeah, basically I'm going to, I'm going to help him out around there and, uh, and he could teach uh, you a few things and then get you to where you need to be. Yeah, hopefully. And, uh, I'm not hundred percent sure what I want to, uh, what else I want to do yet, but I got a couple of little projects. I'm starting a website. Uh, I just launched it actually. You should, uh, you, you got to give me a shout out on that too. Of course. What is it? Hockeyheadquarters.ca what do we do this is your uh they just sponsored this episode <laughs> <laughs> there it is this is your everything hockey directory so as a player if you are anywhere basically and you're looking for training or uh hockey development or you just want to get together for a recreational beer league hockey you're going to find everybody available in that area that offers every single thing hockey right so it's a directory it's supposed to help players because I've, I've been in the position as a player wanting where to... you're in a different town different city and you don't know yeah. how to get ice you don't know what to do you right. you want to skate but you don't know where to go yeah you want to skate with you know people around your skill level if you're a pro you want to get better you want to skate with pros if you're a beginner and you want to just go shoot the shit and have some pints with the boys then you want to be able to find that too um so yeah that's uh so you just launched that just now. I did, yeah. Yeah. Hockey headquarters dot CA. CA. There you yeah. go, folks. Check it out. And don't forget to check out aleshockeytails.com. We got clothes. We got the Sundine jersey signed. That's up for raffle. That's ending any day now. And uh Matt Cruz stuff for hemophilia. People helping people, folks. And uh check out the hockey headquarters dot CA and uh if you need to play hockey, you need to do anything, right? If you're a trainer, if you're a trainer looking to uh, find uh, players, you sign up there, you fill out the profile sheet, and boom, you're on the site. Players can find you from anywhere. Boom. And I, I love your idea. Like the Bruce Peninsula is about as nice as the world gets. And uh, if you can uh, do, if you can fulfill your plan and your goal, which I, I don't see why you wouldn't, I, Seems like you know what you want to do. And you know what? The one thing is when you talk around your shed, there's so many guys that 
that I guess they're just, they're not just hockey. They're hockey players. And that's all they've dedicated their life to. That's all they've thought about. They really don't have a plan for the next step. Right. Right. Yeah. And I mean, I've been uh, freaking out about that for a while, but you know what, you got to relax and, and things come to you when you relax and you're uh, you do what you love. And uh, I want to, I want to be able to live off the land and not be reliant on, a, you know, a nine to five and uh, all this, I, I want my own food available. I don't want to have to go to the grocery store. And that to me is appealing. And that's, and you know what, I don't trust the world these days. It's getting crazy. Look at the, what they're doing with the convoy right now. Is there going to be any food? <laughs> How are you going to, people going to get it? Truckers aren't driving. So uh, I don't know. I just, I don't trust that. And I want to be, uh, I want to be able to take care of myself. So yeah. And uh, every, everybody's got dreams of what they want to do. It's like, for me, I come out here at, I get up at five 30 before I'm going to work all day. Yeah. Cause I, cause I got a dream, <laughs> right? If you're doing what you love, that's your, uh, it's not work. That's your purpose. It is not work at all. It doesn't feel like work at all. I wake up and like you said, I got a spring in my step and that's a five 30. You think yeah. in my life I've ever woken up at five 30 with a spring in my step. <laughs> Never happened. I have, you've had to drag me to practice at 10 AM. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know? Yeah, ah shit but no seriously it's been awesome getting to know you man and uh like when carl vouches for you and says you're a beauty you know i don't want to just have on any random schmo in the shed i want to know who i'm getting and that there's some character there um and when carl vouches for you you're a shed guy in my eyes all day and i i'd love to meet you and if you're up in the peninsula i ain't that far dude well, heck yeah, we're basically neighbors, so we Pretty gotta much. get together now. I, I'd like the the shed is a precious place. I'd like to actually kind of physically be there, dude. It's, um, it, 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 it. People come in and they're like, "Wow!" So like, it's actually like just the shed, like they're that looks. That, it looks comfy. It looks. It's it's inviting. it's it's my home away from home. You could say <laughs> the man cave. Uh yeah. No, I've been working from here for a while. Um, in you know, uh, all surfaces life like yeah my real job potting everything's out here it's it really is like a home away from home and i love it um and shout out to all the neighbors that helped me build it you know and you need good neighbors and like you said you've got a good one right that's the community we're gonna have we're gonna have a heck of a bruce peninsula community no seriously you just you need good people around you and i have fantastic people around me and that's it's how the shed gets built and and then it's like the it's like the fans of the pod like if you're dickhead, I got I don't really have any interest for you. If you're gonna be mean and write mean things about people, or like there was one time I put up the YouTube and someone wrote something mean about a guy for no reason. And I was like, what are you doing? Like, why are you writing something mean about a guy that comes to my shed? Like just uh if, if you don't respect the people coming to my shed, then just don't write anything at all. <laughs> I don't, you know. Well, that's just a reflection of somebody, somebody else. How they're, how, whatever they're saying about somebody else that's usually a good painting of themselves yeah just look at yourself in the mirror folks <laughs> right like have a good time enjoy the day it's sunny out right you said in czech republic today yeah it's really it's it is really sunny yeah. well the sun the sun's out here in canada I, now it's up now it's yeah, uh now 7 36 uh, <laughs> yeah i think we might go meet up and watch the uh well, is it russia and sweden plan you're asking the wrong guy buddy i told you the tv hasn't been on in a while <laughs> yeah i mean i'll make an exception for some hockey i mean i no, you know. i know i would watch it too i'm just a little bit busy with I, you know you gotta yeah, stay, like, you gotta stay focused and i i got uh playoffs saturday sunday with the oh, kids yeah. you know big games yeah. um we got a rematch against the team we played last night in overtime there saturday and then we got the the big dog sunday so she's gonna be a full weekend wow yeah that's tight yeah you gotta stay focused you can't you can't get out of line there no one no, slip you up and you know that could be uh that that's could right. be your legs gone in the third well you gotta be ready to rock and and you know it starts from the top down and if the coach isn't ready if his uh energy levels are low then uh it, it could go right through the team right you gotta stay focused you gotta stay on top of things you gotta be ready to go right and the boys were awesome last night. Can't wait to see them play Saturday. And you know what? Nice getting to know you. Heck yeah. 
I'm pretty pumped that we're uh, we're gonna be neighbors. <laughs> Seriously, and this has been, I, and I can't wait for the shed boost. You're gonna start running a muck in the Czech Republic. Won't even be hard to score anymore. Uh, yeah. yeah. And this has been another episode of Zero Ales and Hockey Tales with Flicker and Wally. 